Hey guys, here to do a uh, podcast for you. This is something that I've been wanting to do for uh, quite a while, and um, I figured I'd, I, I'd do it, you know, since uh, I don't really do too much on the channel all that much, you know. I, I, I try to get, you know, at least, you know, two or three videos out a day, minus the weekends, but, um, you know, this is something new that I kind of wanted to do, and I didn't really do any announcement for it because it was all uh, kind of... Um, I don't want to say it was completely um, out of the blue, but uh, um, or spur of, mo spur of the moment thing. But uh, there was a little bit of planning involved. But um, but yeah, you know, this was something that I just kind of decided to do, and um, you know, decided decided to put it up. Um, uh, and it, uh, and, it, and it gives me the opportunity to try something new and, and see how it turns out and what everybody thinks. Um, just some things off the top before I start talking about really anything of any um, importance, I guess you could say. Um, this is going to be, for the most part, a spoiler-filled podcast. Meaning, I'm not going to go necessarily out of my way when I'm talking about certain movie topics to not spoil something. So, you know, when I'm announcing that I'm going to talk about something, unless I specifically say it's going to be spoiler free, assume that it's going to be pretty spoilery. Um, you know, minus things like, you know, when, when episode eight comes out for Star Wars, you know, I mean, I'm not going to jump on YouTube and spoil everything right away, you know, um, I will wait for that for about a month, uh, but I will do a review for it, uh, a spoiler and a spoiler-free review, so uh, it'll be a little bit up to you to make sure that you don't listen to me, but, um, you know, if this turns out to be something that a lot of you enjoy, then I will make sure when uh, big things like that happen um, that I'll keep it pretty, uh, pretty spoiler-free, but... As far as everything else goes, except for the big stuff, um, I'm going to be pretty free about what I talk about. So um, I just wanted to say that to begin with. Uh, one of the first things that I want to do in this is kind of let you know a little bit more about myself um, and kind of my taste in film and all of that. And then we'll get into the topics that I have planned for this episode. Um, so um, I like pretty much almost anything you know I always tell my friends and the people that know me that uh, there's not really one genre that I like better than another it it really just comes down to I want something to move me or make me feel something that's all I really want and if that happens then uh, I'm happy and um, you know uh, some of my favorite movies are Inception and August Rush and uh, The Odd Life of Timothy Green and uh, Sweeney Todd, The Demon Barber Fleet Street. And, uh, you know, um, I, I just I love movies that that moved me. Um, my favorite movie would probably have to be, um, well, depending on your definition of favorite, because uh, some people think that if you watch a movie a certain amount of times that it's probably your favorite. So I can honestly say the movie that I have watched more than any other movie is Finding Neverland. And so by that definition, Finding Neverland would be my favorite movie. But I'm going to tell you that my favorite movie is Inception. I'm a huge Nolan fan. I'm a Nolanite through and through. I love his films. He's my favorite director. And uh, I think Inception is just an incredible work of art. Um... And it'll probably be a long time before anything knocks it out of its favorite spot for me. Um, when it comes to music, I like um, a lot of different things. You probably won't hear me talk about music that much on this channel unless you guys want me to. Um, but, uh, you know, I really enjoy uh, Pink Floyd is my favorite band. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but in the last few videos I posted, I'm actually wearing a Pink Floyd t-shirt. Um... So, you know, I like them. I like heavy metal. Um, I, I, I like pretty much all kinds of music, except I'm really picky with hip hop and rap, and I don't like country all that much. But besides that, uh, I pretty much will listen to anything other than, uh, other than that. Um, 
TV shows, uh, I'm a big Doctor Who fan. I love Games of Thrones or Game of Thrones, uh, The Walking Dead, uh, Lost is one of my absolute like favorite TV shows that have ever been on TV. The Big Bang Theory. Uh, so pretty much all of your nerdy type stuff. Um, that's that's kind of what I'm into. Uh, so that's just a little bit uh, of information about me. So you kind of know my taste. I've been wanting to do a video about that, but I didn't really feel like that was the right medium for that. Because uh, not necessarily everybody wants to know um, the people they watch, you know, what, what they like. So um, I... Um, uh, I've actually got a glass of uh, mint tea here beside me. That's what I'm drinking. So if you hear me, take a moment. That's probably what I'm doing. I'm probably taking a drink. Um, so yeah, so let's get into uh, the first topic. Uh, the first topic is Disney's The Jungle Book. Um, I just got to see this uh, earlier this week on Tuesday. And um, it, l let me tell you, uh, I kind of kept myself from being... Uh, spoilery in the review as possible which I don't think there's really that much to spoil because from what I know about the Jungle Book it, it's it's pretty much the Jungle Book so if you know the story you it, there's not going to be a whole lot that's really spoiled per se but man this movie is absolutely fantastic you know I I, I um when the movie starts and you get through the Disney Castle logo at the beginning and, you know, it, it does this really cool thing where, you know, the camera kind of uh, pans back and it's like that's how you kind of enter the jungle. And the second the jungle comes on screen, it's so vibrant and it's so beautiful and th just the water. I mean, that's really just like the first thing that comes to mind is the water. It's so unbelievably bizarre to think that it's all CGI, that it's all digital. Not a single thing for the most part, if anything at all. I mean, I, I don't think it's anything at all from what I understand from, you know, what everybody's been saying. Um, but even if there is, you know, a few trees here and there or something like that, that's real it's still amazing because you can't tell what's real and what's fake but again i'm under the impression that it's all fake that all of the landscape all of that is not really there and it really um when you go into this movie knowing that it it's so bizarre it's so strange because there you believe that it's there but 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 it's not you know and um i love the intro of mowgli and um bagheera and and them running through the you know through the forest and and you know they're you know i guess they're trying to teach mowgli how to run like a wolf uh, so he so he can't get caught you know and things like that and um and you know neil does such a great job as mowgli you know he, he right from the get-go he's so endearing and so um um just he's so good at portraying this character and and what he's going through and uh, as the story progresses it just gets it just gets better and better you know and um seeing Bagheera speak and just the way the mouth moves and you know all of these different aspects of this film it's just incredible it's just really is i mean um you know i remember when um james cameron's avatar came out and thinking how, how gorgeous that was and um you know uh i saw that in 3d more than i did in regular and i don't really know what's happened between now and 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 that back then because um i could see 3d movies no problem but it's like nowadays it's like what if I try to sit and watch a 3D movie I get I get awful migraines and so I just completely just stay away from 3D um but this is definitely one of those movies that I wish that that wasn't the case because I would definitely go see this movie again and I would definitely go see it in 3D uh but I just 
Uh, I'm just not really willing to risk that. Um, but, but I remember Avatar being absolutely gorgeous, and I can only imagine what this movie looks like um, in 3D, and I can only imagine what this new technology and what they're able to pull off, what that will mean for movies going forward and the different stories that could be told. It's like, you know, a lot of people have been wondering whether, you know, Disney might do a quote unquote live action slash CGI version of the Lion King. And I would actually be completely 100% down for that. Like, I know that's bizarre to say, but people think it would be weird, but it's really not. I mean, we go see, you know, Pixar movies and we go see DreamWorks animations. We go see Disney animated movies. I mean, look how many people flocked out to go see Frozen and, in, you know, and uh, Big Hero 6 and, you know, all these different Disney movies. Like, yeah, sure, you could say, well, by that standard, we already have an animated Lion King. Why do you want another one? But it's not a real life version. And I with this new technology you could take the story of the lion king and you could do so much new you could take it to a new level that you couldn't in the past and um i think i've heard from some people that have gone and seen the broadway musical that you know there are some different things about the the musical that's not in the movie and so it would be cool if they brought in some of the music or some of the aspects of the live show into the into this new version and so let me tell you the jungle book just i think it's really skyrocketed uh imaginations like all around i mean i i think that um i think it's something special and um you know i didn't really talk about it and um the review that much because again i didn't really want to spoil it that much but um there are a couple songs in the movie and i thought that was um really fascinating um i uh there is absolutely nothing like hearing uh bill murray sing uh the bare necessities it is absolutely uh, I just put a smile on my face. There's just nothing like it. And then, you know, Neil joins in with him. Uh, and it's just, it's a really endearing scene. It's its so great. Um, you, you can't beat it. Uh, and then even Christopher Walken later on does his own version of uh, uh, I Want to Be Like You. And um, that is, it, it's incredible. It, it made the movie uh, just that much better, you know, and... Um, and, and I gotta say, because I really wanted to talk about this in the review, but I didn't want to give it away. But let me tell you, you know, in the cartoon, in the original Disney um, Jungle Book, King Louis, I don't want to say he was ex exactly a a, a, a a bad guy, because, you know, he, he wasn't like Shere Khan in the movie. But he wasn't a good guy. He was definitely an antagonist in the cartoon. And they completely amped that up to like the 10th level in this movie. He's scary. Like there's the there, there's this part where, um, it you know, it's pretty much just like in the cartoon. Uh, you know, Bagheera and Baloo come in and try to help Mowgli get out. And there's a scene, there's a pretty lengthy scene where King Louie is chasing Mowgli and let me tell you I wasn't expecting it but I was on the edge of my seat I was like genuinely scared like I was like this is so creepy I just I couldn't believe that I was feeling this way about a CGI monkey you know what I mean but I but I was I mean it was it was so cool and 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 crazy um you know and um it, it's just that that scene is, i think is one of the scenes that you know if i could say the top three scenes that were in my head after the movie got over and i was walking back to my car it was that uh that scene with king louis chancy Mowgli. it was the bare necessities scene and the third one, which I did mention in the trailer, is uh, there's a scene where 
uh, Baloo is trying to get Mowgli to get some honey for him from some bees. And all these other animals are coming up and like talking and, and stuff. And I was cracking up. Oh my gosh. It is so hilarious. Um, that's probably honestly like my favorite scene in the whole movie. Because it, it's just so hysterical. Um, but yeah, so, uh, you know, that's the Jungle Book. Um, you know, uh, for those of you that have seen it, or even if you haven't seen it, let me know uh, what you th what you think of this uh, down in the comments. Uh, because uh, I I'd love to spark a conversation about it. Because this is such a brilliant, brilliant movie. Um, so the next thing I wanted to talk about was, uh, the, the new Jason Bourne trailer. Um, uh, you know, I gotta say, I remember when the Bourne Identity, uh, came out on DVD. Um, me and my dad went to get it and, um, we just, we loved it, you know? Um, it was such a great movie and, um, you know, that supremacy came out and then I actually got to go see ultimatum in the theater. Um, and it was just great. I just, I, there, there's, there's so many things about this movie, these movies that I love. And, um, you know, I didn't get to see legacy in the theater, but I did get to see legacy, um, once it came out and stuff, but, um, I, I am so excited to see Matt Damon come back as Bourne for this movie. Um, you know, you know, there had been rumors for a while that, you know, he was going to come back and then nobody really kind of knew whether he actually would do it or not. And then you know, I won't forget it. And then, you know, we, 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 the, the trailer came out for the Super Bowl, and it's like, okay, so, you know, they are doing it. All right. Well, that's interesting, you know, because nobody knew, you know, no, nobody heard anything. And so that for me was, um, really cool because, you know, um, because nobody heard anything, you know, it, it was just kind of, you know, what, what's happening. Um, you know, the funny thing is, this is one of those things where I watched the movie and then I went back and I tried to read the books. And I I read, I actually went back and read both um, The Born Identity and, and Born Supremacy. And um, I actually am not a huge fan of supremacy. I know there's a lot of people that absolutely adore supremacy. Uh, I know back when I saw Ultimatum in the theater, a lot of my friends back then didn't really care for Ultimatum all that much, but they loved supremacy and identity and I was kind of like the opposite I um supremacy is always my least favorite and I loved identity and I loved ultimatum um and um uh, this is going to be a spoilery part but in the books uh Marie doesn't die in the books and so I hated that they killed her off in the movie and um that really didn't make any sense to me um because she's actually his driving force in the books to go do what he did. Um, so um, I thought that that added such a unique uh, level or a better level than what they ended up doing in, in the movie. But but I get it, you know, I mean, I understand, you know, you have a vision for a movie and it doesn't seem to bother a lot of people. And it does make sense, you know, I mean, when the person you, you love is killed, um, you know, you're going to go after the people that do it. So I get it. Um, but let me tell you, this trailer is incredible. I, from start to finish, I mean, it's like, I'm trying to think of what part I want to, you know, talk about it and, and pull from, but it's just, it, it's, it's also explosive and in your face. I mean, I just, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is that scene where he just punches the dude with one punch and he knocks him out cold. I mean, that is epic. That is amazing. Um, you know, it seems like Nikki might not be around for much longer. You know, it seems like they're probably going to offer off, which I think is the right move, honestly. Um, it's it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm really, really excited. And, um, you know, it really bugs me uh, to hear a lot of the negative stuff about Legacy. You know, it really does because 
I actually thoroughly enjoyed the Born Legacy. Um, that doesn't mean I think it's it's different as the other Born movies. Because here's the thing, here's an aspect that a lot of people forget. And I've watched a lot of people talk about the Born movies and legacy and all that jazz. And so let me throw my two cents into the into the into the bowl here. Um, I liked Legacy because look, all through the Born tr trilogy, we hear about other agents in the program, and we hear about all these different guys that the same. Th well, not I don't want to say the same thing happened to, but they're all part of the program. I mean, we saw the guys he took out in in the first one and the second one. He's not the only agent, guys. He's not. He is not the only agent. And I thought the one, and I loved Legacy because we got to see another agent. No, he's not born. He wasn't supposed to be born. Legacy wasn't supposed to be the same as the born identity and supremacy and ultimatum. It was a new story about a new guy that was in the same universe as uh, Jason Bourne. And I really enjoyed that. And I actually am still holding out that they might have him and Matt Damon in a movie together. Uh, Jeremy Renner and Matt Damon in a movie together. Uh, I would really like to see that because I really enjoyed Legacy. Now, with all that said, the one negative, the one negative I will give you is that the beginning of Legacy is really slow. And that is one thing that I didn't like about the movie is it took a long time to get into it. There's a lot of, um, not even just setup, but there's just a lot of nothingness, um, um, before anything really happens. And that is something that I kind of didn't like about it. But once it got to the end of the movie, man, I was singing this movie's praise, praises, you know, I mean, it's such a good movie. I wish more people understood what you know they were trying to do with it because um depending on what they do with the story depending on how closely they stick to robert ludlum's books you know there's the opportunity to have more than just jeremy renner's agent and and born you know they could you know more could happen with other agents and how cool would it be to have this these awesome team of agents like go up against treadstone or whatever the company's name is at this point you know uh i think that would be really cool to see a bunch of agents team up together but i don't know maybe that's just me let me know what you know in the comments you know i guess we'll have to see what jason Bourne does in the box office and how and how good of a movie it is um because i honestly think that'll do really good in the box office i think as long as they keep putting good trailers out and they don't put out too many trailers out, they don't spoil anything, um, I'm pretty sure everybody's going to go out to see this. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the Warcraft movie. Um, now, I have not watched the new Warcraft trailer that came out this week or the end of last week. forget exactly when it was. But, um... Uh, but I'm going to, and I'm going to do a reaction to it, because I haven't done a reaction to any of the Warcraft trailers or anything about it. Uh, and uh, some of my friends have been wanting me to, so uh, I will do that. But, um, look. When I was a teenager, my bedroom was Lord of the Rings themed. I have read all three of the Lord of the Rings books. And you know, if you're someone that's read them as well, how thick those books are and how hard it is to get through them. Not saying they're bad books, but just saying there's a lot of verbiage in them. Um, I love fantasy. I'm not sure what to think of Warcraft. Uh, I never really played the video games growing up you know uh not because I, I didn't like rpgs but just because um i i tried to play it several times but it just seemed like too much work you know um it honestly just seemed like too much work to me i didn't get the excuse me i didn't get the appeal and um i just i just i don't know 
you know um so when it comes to this movie I can't go into it with any hopes as a fan of the games. I have to look at this as a fan of fantasy film. You know, um, I love the Lord of the Rings movies. I love the Hobbit movies as well. I enjoy Harry Potter. I, you know, uh, there are a lot of fantasy movies that I enjoy. So look, hopefully it'll be better on the final product. I doubt it, but maybe. But the one thing I can't get past is the CGI. Um, And look, and, and let me clarify, okay? I am... A okay with certain movies having a certain feel. I don't need 100% realism with special effects in every sci fi fantasy movie. You know, um, I, unlike a lot of the people, um, didn't mind all the green screen and all of that that were in the Star Wars prequels. What bothered me with those was the crappy storytelling. That's what bothered me with those movies. And some other minor aspects. But when you go into a movie like this, there's something off about the CGI to my eyes. And this is just what I see. And if you disagree with me, you are... 100% welcome to your opinion. But when I watch the trailers that I have watched for Warcraft and see the clips and and hearing what some other people have talked about, I have to echo what some of them are saying. And that's, it looks really fake. And I don't like it. Um, You know... And that's funny for me to say because there's, because a lot of the problems that I'm having with the Warcraft trailer, the first Hobbit movie, An Unexpected Journey, there are a few moments in the movie where it almost gets to that point. You know, it does. There are a few moments where if they hadn't perfected the CGI just as much as they did, I would have said the same thing about the first Hobbit movie. Now, I don't know what they did, but by the time they got to the second and third one, it wasn't nearly as bad. But the first one, there's a few scenes where it's almost, almost a little off. Um, so it's so it's weird. Um, that's why I can say, going back to the first topic about Jungle Book and the possibility of a, a CGI Lion King movie, that's why I could say I wouldn't mind a whole CGI Lion King movie. Because... That's okay to me. That's not my problem. But when it's clear that you're telling a certain specific story and you've got a certain image that you're trying to portray and it doesn't hit the mark. And I know this is a lot easier said from where I sit than being in the production for this and doing all the work in it and stuff. But I feel like they should have changed something. They should have changed the approach. Instead of giving it a quote-unquote Hobbit feel, they should have gave it a Lord of the Rings feel once they realized that they couldn't master the look of it. But again, I will hold off that particular critique until, um, you know, until I, I see the movie, which... God willing, I will go see. You know, this is definitely a movie that I want to see in the theater. Um, yeah, I just, uh, you know, it's not on the top of my list, um, but it's there. Um, I am excited for it. Um, so, you know, we'll we'll have to see. You know, uh, it's not enough to take me out. I mean, the rest of it is great. I mean, I love. I always forget his name, but I love what's his face. That's in Vikings. 
I think he's going to be really great in it. Um, you know, the rest of the cast, you know, it's got a really great cast. It's got some great people in it. And so hopefully they can just think they can pull this, this thing off, you know, um, that's, that's what I'm really hoping for. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. Um, you know, are you excited for it? You know, did you ever play the game? You know, um, so the last thing on the agenda is, um, James Cameron's avatar. Um, because I've got a lot to say about this. Um, firstly, I am a huge fan of the 2009 Avatar movie, you know, and I kind of mentioned it earlier when I was talking about uh, Jungle Book, but um, I really am a big fan of that movie. Um, the like I said, the, the the 3D and it was just absolutely incredible. I mean, I just I felt so immersed in this world. It it was it was really great. Um, but I have some caveats. I have some things. Um, and I will say for any of you out there that have not seen the director's cut of Avatar, you've got to go check it out. Um, there's about 10 minutes extra footage back in the movie. And while you may not think that that 10 minutes would not, you know, not really add that much, but it does. It really, really does. Um, I saw the extended version a couple times in the theater because it was that good. Um, it really made the movie flow a lot better than it even did beforehand. But even so, I still have a few issues. Um, the main issue is this. This is my number one issue. The borrowing of other stories. Because if you cannot see the similarities between Pocahontas and Dances with Wolves in this movie, you are blind. Um, and Sam Worthington. Now granted, I will give the dude credit where it's deserved. This was more early in his acting career, and he was god-awful. I haven't really seen him in anything recently, so I'm not going to judge him until I do. But he was god-awful. Um, and he wasn't really all that good in Avatar. Um, and in fact, I think James Cameron was really smart in the way they used him because not only does he go back and forth in his accent a little bit in the movie, um, which is only a few times, so it doesn't really bother me that much, but he does do it. Uh, but he's just got this, he's got no, there's no emotion, you know, it's like, I actually, and, and this isn't somebody who hasn't watched it in a long time. I just watched this movie several months ago because I wanted to watch it. So you are this, I am someone who enjoys this movie, but I can't ignore the things that are bad with it either. And here's the thing, you know, Cameron announced that he's doing four more sequels. So we're going to have five Avatar movies total. And that is ridiculous. All right. Be like, look, I am probably one of the biggest fans of this movie. I will absolutely fight for James Cameron's Avatar. But I will be the first one to tell you that if he's planning on Sam Worthington be the lead role in A, all of the Avatar movies, or B, a good portion of the upcoming films, he's either going to have to make sure that Sam Worthington is a much better actor or something. Because I am not sitting through four more movies with Sam Worthington as the lead character. It's not going to happen. Sorry. Look, the special effects are gorgeous. The special effects are breathtaking. But if you don't got good actors in your movie, 
I don't care. I'm not going to sit through garbage. You know, I can excuse a lot of things with Avatar because it really was the first of its kind. Something like that hadn't really been done before. So I will give credit where credit's due. But now that it's done, you've got to step up the game. And that's how I feel. And look, in theory, I am all for four more Avatar movies. I mean, I really am. I, I would love to see how James Cameron could expand on this universe. But here's number two. Here's the other thing, though. Story. Because my first inclination is to ask, oh, right, what other stories is he going to steal from? He used Pocahontas and Dances with Wolves in the first one. What's he going to use for the next one? He's got to come up with something more original than what he came up with last time. Because look, I'm giving Avatar one chance. One. That's it. That doesn't mean I won't see the movies when they come out to DVD or Blu-ray. Because I will. But as far as going and seeing it in the theater, it's Avatar 2. One shot. I'm giving this world one shot. And if he blows it and the story's boring, it might even be one of those things where I walk out. Because look, if he tries to do similar things like with the 3D and the environment as he did with the first one, this is a movie that I will probably try to go see 3D. Um, but I'm not going to do it the first time I go see it though. You know? Because if it's a shitty movie, you know, it, it doesn't really matter whether it's got great environment or not. Um, but this is a movie that I would go see in 3D and risk getting a migraine for. Because I enjoyed the first movie that much. I mean, it really is one of my favorite movies. As many problems as it has. But I just... I'm, you know, I, I'm tired of all these different Hollywood movies coming out that are just stealing from other stories that are just, you know, and look, and, and what I'm talking about is a lot different than a story that has similar notes. Like this is a much different thing than what a lot of people have said about The Force Awakens being just like a new hope. No, 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 no. The Force Awakens is not a new hope. It has certain elements that are similar but it works, okay? But you can't do what James Cameron did with Avatar and every single Avatar sequel that's being released. You just can't, you know? You can't. So, um, you know, it's going to depend on a lot of things. Um, let me know what you guys think, of, you know, in the comments. Um, you know, how excited are you for the Avatar series? Um... We've got, you know, uh, quite a ways, you know, it doesn't come out until, what is it, 2017? It's the first one, I think. So we've, we've got a while, or 2018, it's either 2017 or 18, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, I uh, guess we'll have to wait and see. Well, I guess that's pretty much it, guys. I do want to say, next episode, I will be having a guest with me. Um, a good friend of mine is stopping by, so please make sure you, you uh, come for that. Um, these podcast thingies, talks, whatever you want to call them, um, are going to be uh, pretty much every Saturday. Um, there might be some Saturdays where I don't do it, um, you know, because of life, if, you know, something is going on, but I'm always going to try to, I'm going to try to have one up every Saturday. But if it doesn't happen, um, you know, this is me telling you now, don't, don't be surprised, um, because, you know, life happens. Um, so yeah, guys, uh, hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. It, it would mean a lot to me. I really want to see this channel grow and see what this whole thing can become. And, um, please like, and please tell your friends about it. Um, it really means a lot to me. And uh, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter. Um, so I will see you guys in my videos. And next week 
for another episode. Bye-bye.